Hey, it's Clint here, and uh, we've got some things kind of neat going on. Uh, we're adding OpenZD to the EdgeX, EdgeX Foundry IoT platform. If you're not familiar with it, uh, you can check them out. Pretty cool little project um, used by lots of people doing lots of interesting things. All right, so today uh, we were at the security review for the EdgeX Foundry project, and my demo didn't work. So this demo is just a recording of exactly what I tried to demo today. You can see from this screen here, I have my Golang um, environment, my IDE running. And you can see already a message has popped in indicating that we're authorizing an incoming connection via OpenZD for the eKuiper.identity. All of these services here are all EdgeX Foundry services. And they all use the same Go Mod Bootstrap core library that EdgeX Foundry provides. It was really easy to add OpenZD to that. What wasn't quite as simple is EdgeX Foundry uses a rules engine called eKuiper. And so over here in this window, you see I have my eKuiper running. And it is uh, reading from a queue that's out in Redis. And then every once in a while, when a Boolean rule triggers and matches the Boolean, over will go a message to the core command service. There's another one that just popped in. And so you can see here, we have added OpenZD to all of the EdgeX Foundry microservices, as well as to the eKuiper rules engine. Now the eKuiper rules engine is able to communicate to the Edge X Foundry services using OpenZD securely. And you know exactly who is connecting because you, you know the identity who is actually connecting and you know the exact identity that's coming and being connected to or connect, doing the connecting. What's also neat is while I was in there in eKuiper itself, I was able to add ZD to the server too. So if we were to look at my tunneler, which has this curl Z. Uh, actually, let's look at the new and improved UI that's coming. It has a curl Z identity. And you can see we have a bunch of services that are here. One of the services that's here is this hard to see. We're going to fix that. EdgeX UI.edgex.zd. So if I come back over to here and I go to actually I have it right here, I can get the login screen from my UI.edgex.zd. You can see I've gone right into the um, into the EdgeX UI. I have access to the metadata that is being produced by the device virtual example. I can go to what is it data center? I think that does the stream, so I can start the event stream and see the events that get produced here in the UI. And here are some of the events, so you can see that. And if I were to go back to my actual rule itself that eKuiper is using, uh, let's see if I go to command and I cd to temp edgex and cat my rule. So this is the rule that edgex is, uh, that eKuiper is using. You can see it's actually sending a message to core command dot zd. So I can do a curl to API v3 and then ping. And because I have the ZD desktop edge for Windows running, as you can see, I was able to access that service. If I were to turn off my tunneler like this, I'll no longer have access to the service. You can see there is no such uh, host as core command.edgex.zd. If I turn this back on again, as you would expect, I'll regain access to the service. Off it goes. And there we go. Now I have access to the service again. And so that's the cool demo. Uh, so we've got eKuiper having a Zetified. Oh, actually, we could look at the eKuiper um, URL as well, which is, uh, let's see, by cat curls. I remember, what did I call it? Oh, yeah, so that's eKuiper right here. So we can get a rule status by running a curl. And so here's our status from eKuiper. Also notice eKuiper.edgex.zd on port 80. 
Um, not a valid top level domain, port 80, just for simplicity's sake, so that in the future, I won't have to put the port 80 on here. I can just leave the port off entirely. You can see the status is running. You can see some statistics coming from eKuiper. And uh, that's the eKuiper service. And any of these services I can now connect to via my tunneler from my local machine because my tunneler is uh, authenticated. So let's do that really quickly. Let's go back to that core command. We're going to run that same core command, but I'm going to run it from my identity, which is this one right here. And maybe as a test, what would you expect to see from here? Let's go ahead and run that curl. We got a 404 not found. I must have the wrong curl. Uh, core. Ajax, oh, metadata, yes, <clears throat> uh, core command. There it goes. There we go, so now I got some data. But look at that. You can see that because I'm using the curl Z identity, or curling via ZD, I was able to note that inside of the core command. So core command itself authenticated me. It, I did not need to supply a bearer token. I was just able to do that using OpenZD and get my results. Pass that back to JQ if I wanted to, and there's my results. All right, well, that's gonna do it for the demo. You can see a couple more curls came in. You can see another eKuiper came in, and there you have it.